Hello friends, welcome to the Take Better Photos channel. On September 28, without much fanfare or even a hint of its arrival, DxO Photo Lab 7, one of the top raw development tools, was released. I actually just found out about its launch from this tweet. So is it any good? That's what we're going to be finding out in today's video. Photo Lab 7 costs 220 US dollars which is exactly the same as Photolab 6. Upgrade pricing from Photolab 5 and 6 is 99 US dollars. As always, DxO's pricing is the simplest there is. It only caters for perpetual license. No subscriptions in any of its offerings, which is another thing I like about DxO's products. So what is new with Photolab 7? Let's run through the five main improvements, and at the end, I'm going to tell you whether you should upgrade. The first improvement is the all-new Local Adjustments interface. To understand how the new interface is an improvement, let's remind ourselves how Local Adjustments used to work in the previous Photolab 6. Let's make a Local Adjustment. I'll start off by clicking the Local Adjustments button. I'll use a control point to brighten the subject. Next, I'll use a control line to reveal detail in the foreground. Finally, I'll use a gradient tool to darken the sky. As you can see, Photolab 6 local adjustments are certainly effective. So, what is the problem? The problem lies with the widget used to make the local adjustment. First, it looks very different from traditional implementations where sliders are horizontal rather than vertical, as in Photolab 6. Second, the size of the widget is much smaller, making it more cumbersome to adjust the values in small increments. Third, due to the small widget size, there are no slider labels, which can further confuse users on which slider is which. Fourth, the widget hovers right on top of the image, which may at times block the view of the specific area you are trying to adjust. So those are the main issues with local adjustments in Photolab 6. And I did mention those disadvantages in my previous Photolab 6 reviews. How about Photolab 7? Well, for those who found using local adjustments a pain, the good news is DxO did listen to its customers. The widget is gone and has been replaced with something more conventional. Local adjustments now appear as a tab on the right panel where it should have been all along. As you can see, in Photolab 7, sliders are now much larger and easier to handle. It contains labels for easy identification and no longer obscures your view. Finally, all the adjustments are viewable in one place. No need to click a button to move to and fro from tone to color and back. The look of the mask has also been standardized where in Photolab 6, it might have appeared in grayscale or as an overlay, depending on which tool you were using. Now all masks appear as an overlay. Let's move on to the second improvement. The second improvement has to do with HSL local adjustments. In Photolab 6, if you wanted to perform an HSL adjustment, like desaturate the yellow in this image, you either had to do it globally, meaning the yellow is desaturated across the entire image, or if you want to use a mask, the adjustment is applied to all the colors within the mask, as you can see here. You cannot pick an individual color within the mask for adjustment. In Photolab 7, this deficiency has been rectified 
you can now make HSL adjustments on a mask. To demonstrate this, let's paint on the mask. Let's use the picker in the color panel to pick the yellow color. Now let's move back to local adjustments. Notice that the color wheel has the same color selected. Let's increase the saturation. Notice only the yellow is being affected. The rest of the colors remain untouched. So that's the new HSL local adjustments feature in PhotoLab 7. Let's move on to the next improvement. The third improvement is better black and white adjustments. If you want to dabble in black and white photography, you'll be glad to know black and white editing has been greatly enhanced in PhotoLab 7. As a reminder, in PhotoLab 6, you are limited to just one option in the style panel to convert an image to black and white. In PhotoLab 7, this functionality has been spruced up a great deal. The black and white conversion has been moved to the color black and white rendering panel. You now have more preset options. You can also now adjust any of six color channels to further customize the image. As you can see here, increasing the red really makes the face stand out. Increasing yellow brightens the highlights. Lowering the cool colors darkens the bed, making the baby stand out even more. There you go, a nice black and white result. And it's so easy to do with PhotoLab 7. Finally, DxO also includes three black and white presets that mimic specific film cameras. The fourth improvement in PhotoLab 7 is the support for LUTs. LUTs is a format more popularly used in video and is an easy way to make color adjustments to your image to mimic certain film styles or looks. There are 17 built-in LUTs, but you can always add your own if you wish. Finally, for those who are interested in color calibration and color accuracy, DxO now includes software to do such tasks without the need for third-party plugins. So there you have it, five improvements of PhotoLab 7. So what is the bottom line? Do I think it is worth the upgrade? Well, if you're coming from PhotoLab 6, I actually do not think this set of features is worth the upgrade. Speaking for myself, I was perfectly fine with the old local adjustments panel. The size of the widget did not hinder me at all as I do most of my editing on a large screen. Also, I don't do much of local HSL adjustments nor black and white photography. So I'm likely not the target market for this upgrade. However, if you're coming from PhotoLab 5, DxO PhotoLab 7 has now fixed major deficiencies, bringing it up to par with its top rivals. So for those of you who meet these criteria that you are using PhotoLab 5, or you want to do black and white photography or HSL local adjustments, then I can heartily recommend an upgrade to PhotoLab 7. But let me know what you think in the comments. Do you agree or disagree that PhotoLab 7 is worth the upgrade? Are you upgrading yourself? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.